In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Lord forever. St. Paisios in some of his many dialogues with people that came to meet him. An American came to him one day, and St. Paisios in his simplicity and beauty said to him, what has this great nation of yours done? What Name something great they have done. He said, well, we have been to the moon. And he said, that is very far away. How far away is the moon? And he said, well, it's a half million kilometers or something like that. And how much did it cost you? It must have been very, very expensive to go to the moon. He said, well, yes, it's 1950. We have spent rivers of money trying to get to the moon. He said, well, how far away is God? And he said, oh, God is very, very far away, Elder. And he said, yes, but we get to him with a dry piece of bread. And that is all. There's a lot in that story, other than the humor of it, which he had a lot of humor in his stories, that we, in our sort of rationalism and logic and pride, think we can achieve everything, but it doesn't take that. It takes humility. It takes simplicity. It takes giving ourselves over to God with spiritual logic, a quite different path. Elder Sophroni constantly talks about that when we come into contact with the living God, when we have that personal meeting with God, that everything in the world begins to pale for us and seems like absolute vanity. Nothing means anything anymore except for that relationship with Christ, and we do anything to get to Him. I was reading in one of his writings the other night, actually in his life is mine, where he said that there are very few people, there are not many people, he said, who have the spiritual courage to step aside from the trite path followed by the herd, is what he said. Now that sounds a little bit humorous and maybe a little bit <clears throat> unkind, but it wasn't. It's Elder Sophroni, who was probably one of the greatest men of love of the last century. And he's right. Because the path followed by the herd is constant distraction, is constant turning away from God, is constant me, 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 and what I can do, and very little God. But the path that he speaks of, that spiritual path, is a much different path. It doesn't follow the logic of the world so much. Really not at all. Because when you think about it, so many things in the gospel seem completely irrational. When you follow it from a human point of view, from a logical Western rational point of view more so. In the gospel preceding the gospel today, which was the parable of the ten virgins, which was the, actually the gospel we read on Thursday morning for St. Zinyam, in which your priest and his frailty thought was the gospel for Sunday until a few days before we looked at it, but it, that's good because it dovetails quite readily into it. And that parable that you all know, that you hear during Holy Week, these virgins that are prepared and those who are not, who have their lamps with their oil, and the ones who don't have to go out and get it, and the bridegroom comes, and they're not lit in because they were not prepared for the kingdom of heaven, they were prepared for the coming of their Lord. And there are many who say that this is because those five others, the foolish ones, didn't have virtues, did not gain virtues what they've been given. Well, St. Seraphim of Sauroff, you know, in his famous conversation with Motovilov, contradicts this, and I think quite readily so, he should contradict it, because it's not true. It's not because they didn't have virtues. For goodness sake, they had been lifelong virgins, serving. This is a great virtue, especially in the day we live in now. Imagine what a virtue that is now. It's all, almost unheard of. But they didn't. What they didn't have, he said, is the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. Because all of our works, all the things that we do, need to be for the acquiring of the Holy Spirit. We must trade well as these people with their talents. If we just do nothing with it, it's really utterly useless, and life has been of no purpose whatsoever. So St. Seraphim says they did it, and yes, it was a good thing they did, but they weren't doing it for God. They were doing it for themselves, perhaps out of vanity, perhaps out of some sense of pride. Look what I can do that no one else is doing, and thought about themselves. They really were doing little to gain God. One can say 20 billion Jesus prayers and not find Christ. It was not with humility and not out of love for God. One can come to church every single Sunday, prepare themselves everything, and not find God. 
if it's not done for God, out of love for God, to find God. So we must, in everything we do, seek to be gaining the Holy Spirit, every action that we undertake. Going to the moon is not an evil thing, but was it for the acquisition of the Holy Spirit? Probably not. But St. Paisios, talking about eating the dry rusk of bread, was doing it for the kingdom of heaven, denying himself in all kinds of ways that he might gain simplicity and rely completely on Christ. Everything he did was for Christ. Father Sophroni, talking about stepping off that path followed by the herd, was doing it to follow Christ. No matter what the world thought of him, to follow Christ. And there were five virgins who did it the right way and gained the Holy Spirit and were there for the coming of their Lord. In this parable of the talents today, each of us has been given gifts. None of us is without that. Of course, the vast majority of people in here have holy baptism in the Orthodox Church. So you have the greatest gift of all, which must be answered for. <clears throat> And that's not to say that I did something, look what I did, I'm a good person now. Did you gain the Holy Spirit? There are great atheists too, who are nice people. I've met some of them. We've met people that are pagans, that are nice people. Do they have the acquisition of the Holy Spirit is another matter. I've met many Orthodox Christians who are nice people, but have they attained the Holy Spirit? Are they living the life of the gospel? Are they trading well in the spiritual marketplace, as many fathers say? say Seraphim is fond of this kind of rhetoric because he was a merchant himself before he went to the monastery. And so, you have, of course, the ones who have five who produce five more, and two who produce two more, and this is good. What they were gaining was gifts of the Holy Spirit. They weren't gaining money, they weren't gaining things, unless that, was, of course, was giving to the poor as a gift of the Holy Spirit. They were giving alms for the sake of love of their brother. Not to be seen, one can give lots of money and not acquire the Holy Spirit because they're doing it out of pride for a tax break only, God only knows what. But that's not the way to attain the Holy Spirit. Those things aren't bad in themselves, the pride is, but not the tax break perhaps. But we need to be doing something to attain the Holy Spirit and out of love for God and out of love for our neighbor. And then you have the one, unfortunately, who is like the most of us and me most of the time, who just has all these great gifts that God has given them and buries it in the ground. It's not a blessed thing. It's a quite a terrible thing. It's the lukewarm that the Lord will spit out of his mouth, as he says in the Apocalypse. Because God has given us great gifts, and he expects us to offer them back. Everything that we have, to be offered back. And there's nothing really we can offer God. It's all his anyway, and everything else we get is a gift from him. But we still have to offer them back to him. What he wants is us. My son, give me thine heart, as he says in Proverbs. He wants everything that we are, every single part of our being, he wants for himself because he loves us and desires to be in relationship with us. So whatever we do, don't bury it in the ground. Life is very short. I've yet to meet the old person yet who has not told me their life has passed before their eyes. What did they do with it? All the things they look back and they wish they had done, but they can't do now. It's not too late for them to repent and turn to God, but the fruits they could have gained are lost. We too must give every moment of our lives to Christ. Life is short. It passes. And then what? You look back and say, oh, I wish I had done this. There's stories of these <coughs> martyrs who had suffered immensely. One of them appeared to one of the saints that said, if I had known the treasure set up in heaven, I would have wanted to have suffered more. This is one of the great martyrs, by the way, that said that. So it's a beautiful thing. But spiritual logic, when St. Paisios is talking to others, is quite a different matter. He says that, for example, if we have a wallet full of money, go give it away. That's spiritual logic. Not rational logic from the world's point of view. He says, if we have a lot of great food to eat, go give that away and eat the dry rusks. He tells us over and over to do things like that. But he says, look at the gospel. Instead of going with one mile, he tells us to go two with someone else to give them the other garment we have. This is not rational logic. To love our enemies, to bless those who curse us, to forgive everyone up to 70 times 7, which is, of course, eternally is not rational logic. It is the logic of God. It is the logic of the gospel. It is the logic of the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. 
So whatever we do, we need to start focusing in our hearts on that level. And listen,